Welcome back to episode 2 of how to film and edit VR only video masterclass. And stay to the end of a special announcement. Finally, a consumer level 3D camera from Kenda is silently announced via Kickstarter. But now, let's back to the Canon EOS VR system and the deal for Shy Lens. If you just get the camera and are new to the Canon pipeline, it's overwhelming. Don't worry, I will help you step by step in this tutorial series. If you missed the episode 1, check the link right here. It is very important you practice what I teach in that episode first to make sure you capture is perfectly level without capturing your tripod. It is expensive to fix it in post in VR. This tutorial will cover the differences between Canon C-Log and C-Log 3 and how to expose correctly using them in VR filmmaking. We will cover using the official Canon technical LUT and third-party LUT like Leeming LUT to maximize dynamic range without clipping your subjects, especially filming outdoors. Getting critical focus in VR 180 is very important. I will teach you how to do that as well in this video. Then, we will cover the official Canon EOS VR system editing workflow. From stitching or no stitching stereo calibration using the EOS VR utility, all the way to editing directly inside Adobe Premiere using the EOS VR plugin. We will also cover raw photo workflow, how to bypass the limitation of raw photo editing in EOS VR utility. At the end of this video, we will discuss distribution strategies, how to release your VR 180 video on YouTube VR and Oculus TV. We get a lot to cover in this tutorial, so let's go! Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here, back from another in-depth Canon EOS VR Masterclass. This Masterclass series is completely free with love. So please consider sharing this video on your Twitter, Facebook, give it a like and subscribe if you have not already. Help us to help you on your journey to becoming the master on VR filmmaking. When you first get your camera and the lens, you should first use the hex key provided in the package to ensure that your left and right eye have the same focus. When you do that, nailing focus on set is very easy. How to focus. Step 1 before shooting is always nailing the critical focus. This is a manual list and you need to set the focus manually. If you can master focus, your VR 180 will be sharper and better looking than 90% of the video out there. Let's turn on manual focus peaking. As you see, my MF peaking setting under the second tab of AF is grayed out. If that happens to you as well, first go to the 7 tab of the camera setting and turn off zebra setting. We will come back to zebra when we talk about perfect exposure in R5. Now turn on focus guide and go to MP peaking setting. And turn peaking to on, level to high and color of your choice. During daytime filming in an outdoor environment, I like to use the EVF instead of the LED to nail critical focus. There is a trick to nail focus on the fisheye lens. If you can, make your f-stop to 2.8, the widest you can go on your RF 5.2mm dual fisheye lens. If you nail focus on 2.8, your focus will be perfect on all other apertures. We recommend filming at aperture 5.6 and above, but focus calibration use 2.8 when you can. Now hit the magnify glasses button to zoom in twice at 15 times. Use your 
touch screen to find your subject in the frame. I love the touch screen at R5, so intuitive. Now turn the focus ring and pay attention to the peaking. There is a sweet spot that peaking is at its max. Find that spot and you achieve a perfect focus. Now hit the info button to switch to right eye to make sure right eye is also achieving the perfect focus. If not, you will need to use the hex key to adjust focus again. I will recommend putting your subject about 1 to 1.5 meters away for focusing. Even though the lens is an infinite focus, there will be sharpness differences depend on your subject's distance to the camera. 1.5 meters usually is the stereo sweet spot as well. If your subject is super close, you usually need to refocus again on a very close up objects. After you achieve critical focus, you use the gaffer tape to mark down the point. I usually use the Canon logo as my reference point. If the white line is not pointing at the gap between the A and the N, it usually means the focus is not right. This trick allows me to quickly focus on set without doing the above workflow. Each lens is going to be different, so go through the above workflow first to find your critical focus point. The next time, you can use the marking to focus even faster. After I achieve critical focus, I usually turn off peaking. You can leave peeking on if you need more help. Exposure One of the major differences in camera operation between the Canon EOS VR system and the consumer VR camera like the Insta to see Evo or the upcoming Cantal Eagle is setting manual exposure. You never ever use auto exposure on video shooting with Canon R5. When you combine manual exposure, the correct manual exposure, and the Canon C lock, it will help get you the best dynamic range, the best image quality, and the best film like color. It really makes your production stand out from the crowd. As my goal here is to push you toward professional quality, so even you are a consumer, push yourself to be better. Treat this as an art making. Your effort will be well worth it. So step one, my camera settings. Go to menu and the first tab set movie record quality to 8K-D, 29.97P, pick all I if you want the best image quality and flexibility in color grading in post, and IPB down arrow right here for vlogging, style shooting, to save SD card space and storage space. I don't see any differences in image quality between the IPB and IPB light, so I go with the option to save me more storage space. In VR, you never ever shoot anything below 30 frames per second. VR headset refresh rate will hurt viewers' eye if you shoot at 24 frames per second, so never do that. Ideally, you should film at 60 frames per second. But Canon R5 at the point of recording does not allow that in a K. So hopefully in the future, R3 or R5C, which is coming up, will enable us to finally shoot at 60 frames per second. Go to the third tab and set your white balance. Now go into Canon Lock settings and choose a Canon Lock, C Lock or C Lock 3. Turn view assist off as it always throw you off the lock look. I would suggest you practice looking at the lock color. Set color matrix to neutral, color space to BT709. Basically, copy my setting right here exactly. Before you decide which Canon lock to use, let's talk about the differences between C lock and C lock 3. C lock versus D lock 3. Zero 3 gives you technically one stop more dynamic range, especially in high light. But C.3, your base ISO is 800. So in a really bright environment, if you need your ISO below 800, you need to use C lock to bring ISO back down to 400. C.3 also unlock cinema gamut on your R5, so you can match your color with other cinema light Canon camera, but we are talking about VR video and we are shooting in IPB compressed 10-bit format. So at this point, I find C-Log is 
easier to handle in post. If you go Canon RAW, then C-Log3 will be really come in handy. I encourage you to go experiment yourself. You need to learn how to expose correctly no matter which locks you choose. So now let's learn that. If you have an external monitor like the Porky BM5 right here, we will use that and use their false color feature. This is by far the best way to nail exposure. If you want to learn the ins and outs of using light meter and false color to get the perfect exposure in VR filmmaking, I will highly, highly recommend you check out my tutorial right here. Side note, you will need to use an external monitor to solve the Canon R5 overheating issue filming for the VR180 for anything longer than 10 minutes. So this is one of the must-have accessory and gears. To do that, go to setting, second tab, turn on eco mode, and set power saving viewfinder off in one minute. This will make sure LCD and the viewfinder will turn off and will automatically turn off again after you adjust settings during shooting. This is how you can solve the overheating issue forever and have unlimited filming time in VR 180. Use it. You also need a mini HDMI to HDMI cable for Canon R5. Let's hope R5C will have a full size HDMI. Connect your Porky with the R5 using the HDMI cable. Porky has a built in RE for colors. Switch to false color. Now get an 18% grade card and point at the camera. Zoom in on your fisheye to the 18% grade section. I use the color checker passport video here. Check the Amazon link down below if you are interested in getting one as well. Based on RE false color, Green is where the middle gray should be, which is about 40 to 42 IRE. Adjust your exposure until you see the gray card become fully green. Here, you get a perfect exposure. It is that easy. After you achieve perfect exposure, if you are shooting in C-Log 3 or even C-Log, I will open up the aperture at this point to get half to one stop over exposed result. This is my preference for grading in post and the same preference as many professional colorists. This is why you hear many people keep telling you that you should always overexpose in c 3, but you have to first nail your perfect exposure first before you can experiment over overexposure for color grading. And remember, never ever underexpose at c 3 or c -lock. If you don't want to see nasty digital noise. If you pay attention when you switch to C-Log, ISO 100 to 300 is labeled as L, and in C-Log 3, ISO 100 to 700 is labeled as L as well. So, most important thing you need to remember when shooting in Canon Log is to never let your ISO go under 400 in C-Log and 800 in C-Log 3. If you are shooting in low light, make sure your ISO increase is time your native ISO. So it is 800, 1600, and 3200. I only use this ISO to maximize dynamic range. The Canon R5 still look really beautiful and has low noise even in ISO 3200s in C-Log3. It is a true low light VR camera, far better than any other camera come before it as long as you follow the above exposure principle. Easier exposure strategies. Now, let's say you do not have an external monitor and you are shooting a run and gun VR documentary. Is there an easier way to nail exposure with confidence? Especially when you are outdoors? Yes, we will use the standard technical LUT like the Canon official conversion LUT or better, the Leeming LUT Pro and in-camera Zebra. So, no more worry about one-stop overexpose and finding the middle gray or having an 18% gray car on set, which is always hard to find. Back to your camera setting, go to MF Peaking setting and turn it off. Go to the 7 tab and go to the Zebra setting 
turn on zebra settings to zebra pattern to zebra 2 and set zebra 2 level to 95% if you are at C log and 85% if you are at C log 3. If you shoot in Canon RAW, use 75% in zebra. Zebra run does not matter as you cannot really see it in dual fisheye list. Go back to Canon Log setting and make sure your color space is BT709 as there's no HDR in a VR headset just yet. Do not use Cinema Gamut even you are in C-Log3. These strategies assume you want to save time instead of spend hours on color grading, which Cinema Gamut will take you that. Now, the rest is very simple. Look at your LCD screen and anything in Zebra is overexposed, as shown here. The biggest advantage over the histogram is that the zebra show you which area of the image are overexposed, just like false color. So you can make a decision based on which part, if any, you will let go and let it clip, and which part you will need to keep. For example, skin tone. In outdoor, 9 out of 10 situation, you will need to make that decision to let go of information that is not important to your story and keep the subject, the actor, in perfectly exposure. So I would stop down when the talent face just below the zebra, knowing that I did not clip he or her face, but also get the perfect exposure. And that's it. In post, you just need to use the Canon official LUT or better, the Liming LUT Pro. Now your image should be what the reality looks like. This should cover everything you need to know about camera settings and getting the perfect sharpness and perfect exposure. Now let's quickly talk about editing and post-production workflow using the Canon EOS VR system. Workflow 1, if you do not have Adobe Premiere Pro, is to use the Canon EOS VR utility. Warning for all the PC users out there, you do not have any intermediate editing friendly format as rendering option. No Cineform or DNxHR. Apple ProRes Render is only available if you are working on a Mac. So the Canon EOS VR utility is really a Mac only workflow. PC, you should get the Adobe Premiere plugins instead. There are also separate purchases. Subscribing the EOS VR utility does not provide you with a subscription to the Premiere Pro plugins. Watch out. Open up Canon EOS VR utility, drop in your fisheye footage from the camera. The plugin already did everything for you. If you shot in C-Log or C-Log 3, click LUT button. The software will apply the Canon official LUT for you, which is very convenient. Another reason why you should always shoot in Canon Lock. You can check horizontal correction if you did not level your footage during shooting. Click the export button to render. As you see here in PC, we only have DPX image sequence and H.264. In Mac, you will have ProRes as an option. Heck, raw photo editing. So Canon official said the current EOS VR utility does not support raw photo editing in VR 180. I know lots of 3D photographers looking to buy this camera only for its amazing photo feature. Not being able to shoot and edit in raw is just not okay. Luckily, there is a walkaround thanks to one of my viewers, Mark Sokup. Thank you Mark for helping the community out. So the walkaround is very easy. Make sure you shoot at RAW and JPEG at the same time. And we are going to color grade in Lyron on the RAW, run it out as a JPEG, and copy the meta from the original JPEG into the new JPEG. Open up the RAW file in Adobe Camera RAW or Lightroom. Do your standard coloring. Export it as a JPEG. Then go download EXIF2 by Felix Harvey here and unzip it. Drop the original JPEG and the color graded JPEG into the download folder. Open Windows CMD2 or Terminal on a Mac. CD into this folder. Now copy and paste in below command. Hit enter and let it do its thing. Now open USVR utility and point the folder to this folder. 
Look at that! It auto stitched your raw photo now. From here forward, just render it as usual and release it. We always try our best to offer extra value to help you. So don't forget to share the love, give this video a like, drop a thank you comment down below. USB VR Premiere Plugin for PC user, Premiere plugin should be your purchase instead. If you drop in the fisheye footage, it is already automatically corrected for you. You can check horizontal correction here if your footage is not level. Here you can drop in Lumetri color panel in basic correction, low in the can official LUT, or use the Leaming LUT for technical color space conversion to Rec 709. In Creative LUT, you can use the free Leaming LUT film look to have a more cinematic look. You can continue color gray here, but if you get imperfect exposure, this is all you need to do. Then, do not edit the video here. This is a CPU only effects without any GPU acceleration. Let's render it out as a ProRes 422, bring it back in Premiere. Now we get smooth playback even in 8K. If you want to learn how to edit VR warranty video inside Adobe Premiere Pro, check out this in-depth tutorial right here. For how to publish it on Oculus TV inside Oculus Quest 2, check this tutorial right here. Thank you for watching episode 2 of this in-depth VR 180 filmmaking masterclass. Now let's talk about the upcoming Kendall Ego on Kickstarter. The Kendall Ego is a 3D camera system that come with a VR headset as you see the image right here. By the look of it, it is not really a 180 camera, it is just a 1080p 3D at 60 frames per second video camera. It will generate a 3D video though that will work on Oculus TV and YouTube VR inside a VR headset, but it does not have that 180 field of view. We still do not know what the actual FOV is. It comes with a VR headset with 37 PPD, pixel per degree. To give you some reference, the Oculus Quest 2 has about 19.9 PPD, and the VAL Index is 14.4, and the HP Verb G2 is 22 PPD. So, for the 3D video, this device will have better image quality. There are lots of people watching 3D video on Oculus TV without the 180 head turning. So I guess the Kendall Ego is going after that market instead of the VR filmmaker markets. Again, it's too early to tell if this will become the next VR 180 camera or just a 2D camera. 3D camera is just seem to be a step backward in the technology. I will update you immediately when I get more information from Kendall. For now, the only real VR 180 solution is the Canon EOS VR system, FM Duo, and the Zcam K2 Pro, with the Canon being the cheapest and the easiest solution. In the next tutorial, we will discuss how to edit the Canon VR footage without using the Canon EOS VR system, including a free, completely free, and better solution for VR 180 professionals. It will allow you to adjust the disparity intensity for super close-up objects and further calibrate and remove vertical parallax completely to have a more comfortable 3D end result. So if you want to save money and get better VR 1D result, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. Give this video a big thumb up to thank my effort here. Drop a thank you comment down below if you feel like extra, extra thankful. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.